Listen, the D tackle room is better across the board. But how good can Mozzie Smith be? Good people, it's your boy Mr. Rome, Cowboys Fan Talk, right back, like I never left. What's up with y'all, man? Hey, I know what y'all doing. I'm doing the same thing. You're watching the calendar. How many days is it to training camp? We getting close. We getting close, but it's cool though. CFT got you. Daily content. I ain't letting up. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate the support. We close to 20,000. We about 600 off. Appreciate all the love, likes, shares, etc. Um, help your boy get there if you want to. But I appreciate you nonetheless. Let's talk about the D-Tackle room. Specifically, let's talk about Mozzie Smith. Um, this video came about because yesterday the debate on Twitter was about Mozzie because one of those fan accounts put up, you know, that Mozzie Smith is basically stronger than Aaron Donald. Now, I see what people are saying. That's disrespectful comparing Mozzie Smith to Aaron Donald. I agree. Aaron Donald is one of the best legendary D tackles this league has ever seen. Like I was comparing Micah Parsons to Aaron Donald as in one of those players that is so generational. His name is defines a 10 year period. That's Aaron Donald. Mozzie Smith ain't that. We could be only so lucky he gets to that. Let's just be real. That don't mean Mozzie Smith ain't going to be an animal in his own right. Let's be real there. They're two different type of players. They're just two different type of players. They're not the same player. Um, Mozzie is a disruptive, Vita Vea, one-tech, animal type of a player. Now, they did say that he showed certain potentials that he might be great at pass rushing. He had .5 sacks in his entire tenure at Michigan. I mean, I'm not really looking for him to come in and get eight, nine, ten sacks. If Mighty Smith gets three sacks, four sacks this year, it's five maximum. But three or four sacks, I'm going to be ecstatic. She's going to add on everything. But his placement affects the entire defense. We've talked about this. Him being there, him being disruptive, him being a person that's immovable, he was moving 800 pounds with his arms. Apparently, he bench presses 325 rep wise, like extremely strong. Extremely strong. Sorry, maxes out at like 550. So that comparison, Aaron Donald is fine. It's just weightlifting. But he showed me a couple things in Michigan. People forget he was not a rotational D tackle. He played all the snaps. His main objective was to be disruptive, stop the run, gap control. It was not to even go forward. That's not what he was designed to do. <laughs> now, if we allow him to go forward because he's surrounded with greatness, so be it. But let's get there first. Let's, let us let me see it first. I'm not really looking for him to be a pass rusher. You know what I'm saying? That's not our goal or directive. Um, I just feel like if he comes in and does what he's good at, being immovable, being strong, holding people off with one arm because you can, throwing people with one arm, just being a physical specimen, an angry, nasty D tackle. We're already set. Now, why did I say our D tackle room is already better? We only added Mozzie Smith. Well, we have Jonathan Hankins from the start of the year this year. Last year, we traded for him because we were having issues. He wasn't necessarily in the best of rolling shape. He wasn't getting a whole lot of tick. He comes in the Cowboys again, way more tick. That might have been why he got injured. He wasn't in the best condition, best of conditioning. Now we're getting him. He's been through the off-season program. He's been training. There's video out there of that. Um, he's complimented the D-Tackle room, saying everybody looks nasty. It's a bunch of dogs in there. And I think having him through a whole training camp, not that we're going to go out there and run him into the ground, is going to help just conditioning-wise. He's savvy. He's still super strong. He's still quick off that line. I feel like he's going to 100% provide something that when he came in, it changed our defense. So now we got two of them. Now, I, feel, I look at our defensive tackle room like two sides of the coin. We got the pass rushing DNs, and we got the one, well, three text, one text, if you want to be football technical. Um, and then you got the trash cans full of dirt, stop the run, be disruptive in the middle, D tackles. All right? 
So we got the D tackles that's going to be pass rushy, third three tacks. You got Oso Diggy Zua. Chauncey Golston, I feel like, falls right behind him. I think Neville Gallimore's on his way out. I think it's just over for him. I do. I know I've been one of the one banging the drum for Neville. And if he comes to camp and shows me something different, I will be the first to make, in a, video and, make a video and apologize. I don't see it, though. I think Neville's going to get cut. I don't think he's going to make nobody. Because he's not. Junior is going to make this team. Junior Fihoku, that's going to be our third um, person in rotation to pass rushing. DND tackles. They like to have versatile people that can go in or out. That Those three techs, Osa, Chauncey Golston, Junior Fuhoku. And you'll say, okay, so what about the other side? You got Hankins, you got Mozzie. Mozzie probably will start. Hankins will back him up. They'll rotate in. Sometimes they'll play at the same time, depending on rundowns. But that's going to be our one text. And I, I think you'll say, well, Big Bo will be third in rotation. Not so fast. This is where I throw a curveball at y'all. I'm not opposed to them bringing in another veteran. I'm not trying to just throw Big Bo in the trash. And I don't know if Big Bo is, he might have been training. He might be ready. He might be ready. And if somebody can provide me a little facts on that, let me know. Because um, Quentin Buhana, Quentin Bohana, I like him. I like his attitude. But you got to still show me on the field. And he hasn't shown me enough to say your job is solidified. Now, there's a couple of veterans out there that will be way more effective in a three-man rotation than they would be in, let's say, a starting rotation. You know, Now, I don't think we're going to get a Dominic and Sue. I don't see Linval Joseph. I just don't. I don't. They just play for the Eagles. They got that stain on them. They cool. But could I see us going to get uh, Keem Hicks? Rotate in. Rotate in. Let's keep everyone fresh. Can I see that? Yeah. Now, maybe Mozzie's going to play 60 70% of the snaps, and then you keep a Quentin Bohana because no veteran is going to sign for the fact that they might not play. I don't know. But what if Matt not, Matt Ioannidis wants to come come to town? You don't know. Now, these people want a little bit of money. A little bit of money. But they're older, though. They're in their 30s. Well, I think Ioannidis is 29. Um, what about Shelby Harris? Another trash can full of dirt. Now, I know what y'all are saying. That's what used to get us in trouble, Rome. Going to get these big, heavy D tackles that's old and they don't last or they don't got it no more. I get it. But we got our young horse in Mozzie Smith. We do. But it's great to keep your young horse fresh and healthy for years to come by not pushing him and putting a whole defense on his back. He's going to be a weapon. Because, look, Mozzie Smith's season is not going to be defined. At fast fact, answer me. If you made it this far in the video, answer me in the comments. What's the, the the dream season for Mozzie Smith? Uh, how many sacks? Because I'm looking at it like this. Three sacks, four sacks. Just be disruptive. That's that's my dream season. But what are y'all thinking? Because I just want to make sure everyone has correct expectations for Mozzie. That's all. That's all. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind another veteran um, D-tackle to add to the rotation. If we get to camp, now this is all after camp. This is not happening pre, pre, previous to camp. Don't expect the signing no time soon. This is, we're going to get to camp. We're going to make some assessments, and that's when you might see a, another running back signing. If the running backs ain't running back, like it ain't looking right. If the D tackles ain't D tackling, we're going to get another one. That type of situation. That's why a lot of these these free agents, they're going to sit on the, the, the board, and they're going to wait for that phone call as after camp starts and people start, first of all, injuries. Knock on wood. But outside of injuries, um, just people looking bad. Then you make calls. You feel me? Safety room needed somebody a couple years ago. Who we call? Malik Hooker. So we got to wait for camp to start. They got to do some evaluation. We're going to pay attention. And then you might see a Matt Ioannidis, a Shelby Harris, or somebody else brought in to rotate. You know what I'm saying? But I'm looking at it like this. Who's to say that Osa's spot is completely solidified? Not that I don't think Osa's a beast, I'm saying that competition breeds excellence. And I want somebody behind Osha that's going to push him too. I don't expect for him to, to move. Osha's Odiki Uzua is very underrated. I just expect when you've got somebody behind you, you know what I'm saying? You think Mozzie Smith want to let Jonathan Hankins look better than him? He would like for him to mentor him, but he don't need him to look better than him. I like competition in the same room. Not to create animosity, but to create excellence. But look, man, the way I'm looking at it like this, our starting D-tackle room right now, Mozzie Smith, 
Oso Diggs will be the starting D tackles. And you got Hankins and you got Chauncey Golson rotating in. If Junior beats out Chauncey, it is what it is. And you got Junior Fuoku and you got Quentin Bohana. And you got to ask yourself, is Big Bo going to be the one on this team? Or are we bringing in a veteran? What are we going to do? We ain't got to get the DN. We'll do another video on DN, but I'm looking at it like this, man. The D tackle room is already better than it was last year, just out of experience, out of pure talent added. And I don't want to. It's your boy, Mr. Rome. I holla.